If you guys are looking for cheap, fast, and reliable Madden Ultimate Team coins, look no further than my sponsor, MuttReserve.com. They're super great. They got fast 24-7 support. Make sure to check them out, and make sure you use code Poodle at checkout for an additional 15% off your order. What's going on, everybody? It's Poodle back with another Madden Ultimate Team video, guys, and today I'm going to be going over the gridiron notes for the massive franchise update that we're going to be getting, guys. Now, for all you guys who are franchise fans, just fans of Madden in general, it's nice to see them finally putting some effort in something that isn't just something that makes them money. You know, just as a general fan. Now, I am a big franchise player myself. I actually do really enjoy franchise. I am in a competitive 32-team league. I really enjoy playing it, honestly, guys. I think it's more fun sometimes than Mutt. It's more like a change of pace back, right? Like, you know, Mutt's the main thing, but then franchise is the nice game mode that can go on and play some regular style football, you know, simulation style, ratings matter more, and so on and so forth. So for all you guys who are like franchise, or if you guys like the yard, guys, just to quickly, uh, quickly reference in this video, they did add play a friend to the yard as soon as everything goes live so you now can play against your friends which guys playing with your friends is fun but let's, let's be honest when, you, when you're in a party with your friends and you guys are all trash talk and playing nothing's better than playing against your friend because it gives you incentive right when you guys beat down on other people it's like whatever when you beat down on each other it makes you actually want to like dev up your guy and get him better so you guys can compete better against each other but guys before we get into the video and go through everything if you guys do want a chance to be shout out and say poodle squad all you gotta do is like the video go down below and comment down below Poodle Squad, and of course turn on the Noti Bell, once you do all those things, you have a chance to be shouted out. For today's Poodle Squad shout out, we got, uh, let's see, let's see, Brady Burns. Shout out to Brady Burns, being a part of the Poodle Squad, thanks so much for showing support in each and every video. And if you guys need coins for anything, head over to my reserve down below. Take advantage, use code Poodle for 15% off. But yeah, let's move on from that guys, let's get into this. I'm super excited to go through this as a franchise player. So, let's see, let's see, these are the first of three franchise updates with this release. So, there's three post launches for the year, I guess that's what they kind of have. So think about it this way. We're going to have one, I think, now. I believe one in January, and I don't know when the third date is, but we're going to have three big franchise updates, and then that should really lead into a much better Madden 22 franchise year. So first, we've got Dev Trait Regression Tuning. Star, Superstar, and Superstar X Factor will not have desired counts that are treated as the correct amount of each dev in your franchise. A new league setting will be allowed to commissioners to decide the right amount. Okay. In the offseason, new logic will run to decide which players are eligible to regress. If there are more players than a specific dev trait, then the setting says desired eligible players will be regressed priority order until the target is met. In some cases, there may be slightly more than the target after regression if no players are found eligible. If you prefer to play in a league where dev trades can't regress, you can also turn off dev trade regression. I personally don't believe in dev trade regression. I think that they should keep their dev traits. They should just lower stats, right? Because at the end of the day, you know, Chandler Jones and all these guys in the NFL, they're a lot older. And in Madden, they would take away their dev. But Chandler Jones is still a, you know, he's still a monster. He's just slower or a little less explosive, but he still is, you know, so great at Calais Campbell. See, Calais Campbell at 35 in the NFL is still a top-tier player, or even at 34 in the Jaguars. But in Madden, he'd be, he'd, they'd regress him. Meanwhile, I think he should keep his abilities because that's what made him special, right? But he should just lose athleticism, right? Because that's what, that's what getting older essentially is, right? Like, you know, in basketball, anything. When you get older, you just lose some explosiveness. You lose some strength. You lose some of that, but you still, for the, you know, the great, the X-Factor type players, they still have their specialness to them. They just... You know, it's just, it's just toned down. So I think that I think that definitely should uh, be turned off. You guys have that option. There will also be, which is big right here, guys. Uh, they will be they will be uh, critiquing a breakout depth scenario for positions because they feel like people who are just overabundance, like too many, there's too many people getting high depth trades after a few years. And also, there will be new three new breakout quarterback scenarios. Now that's important. If you guys didn't know, quarterbacks couldn't get breakout scenarios before. So if you're a franchise guy, if you want to get your quarterback to X-Factor from normal that you drafted, which is four dev, uh, dev upgrades, you have to play a minimum of four seasons and be a top four passer to dev every season. And that's if, if you managed to be a top four passer in four seasons straight, you would get it. And let's say you messed up one or two seasons, but you just fell short. Now it could be six seasons, right? Like that, that's horrible. i um, happy they added breakout scenarios for quarterback. And then you can turn this on or off, depending on what you want to do here. Now, playoff bracket, playoff bracket, starting week 13 of the regular season, there will be a things to do item that take... It takes you to the current playoff picture if the season ended that week, including the seeding for each team that would be in the playoffs. Once wild card begins, the playoff bracket will have all the scores of the games that have been played and the box score availability by clicking on the matchup. Simple stuff there, guys. Now, this player card career stats, which I don't think is that important. And then we have X-Factor customization. This is the biggest piece. Now, guys, I will get into some of the mutt news and everything else as well, so stay tuned for that. Another highly requested community feature, we brought over our functionality from player mode. This allows you to alter your X-Factor ability. So remember, if you get a player that you deb for like a whole month or weeks and you finally get him to x factor and he gets the worst x factors like you know dk metcalf he gets second win in energize you're like wow that's what i wasted my time for you can now go ahead and alter it based on the archetype and thresholds which i think is super super important kind of like mutt or my career now retirement improvements and now shows you guys as the players retire which i think is cool because in, in before it'd be like let's say let's say like calais campbell and or whoever retired you wouldn't even know you wouldn't even know unless you check that team 
And then once you did, you kind of wondered where he went. Was he traded? Was he cut? I, I like how it kind of specifies that there. But guys, that's about it for this part of that. Now, going over here, this is for mid-January. Personnel logic improvements, commissioner controls, commissioner controls, commissioner draft tools, and then house rules. Now, guys, I'm going to go into the more mutt-related stuff now, some of the more regular gameplay updates uh, for the rest of the video. Yeah, so here is the mutt more like Madden gameplay related stuff. So fix the issue allowing offensive users to break out of the handoff on gun Y flex off MTN mountain counter, whatever you want to call it. And run with the quarterback. That was a mouthful. Making the plays appear to be a version of quarterback draw. Fix an issue causing awkward ball warping on some halfback toss play. That's good. Fix all distance related abilities to take to take pass leading into account as a triggering condition. Dev no. Route abilities were not given catching benefits due to the pass leading of the quarterback. A receiver with short out of lead would not receive any benefit if the receiver was inside the numbers when the pass started, even if the pass lead caused the receiver to catch the ball short outside the numbers. Anytime a ball is led into the area of the field, that ability is designated for the receiver will get an ability catch benefit. Get all the ability catching benefits. Fix the playbook issue on a specific jet sweep PA play, causing a blocker to miss a rushing defender. Uh, let's see, we got fix an issue where motioning an outside receiver will cause inappropriate defender coverage swapping for specific coverages. Added functionality for user control defenders successfully hit stick the ball carrier immediately following a block shot. That's pretty cool, actually. Uh, let's see where are we at now. So we're down here. Uh, tuning to reduce reaction time penalty for linebackers with the linebacker style trait set to cover. This tuning should make coverage linebackers react faster in run plays and moving towards their run fits. Next playbook updates. We got blocking improvements. Made several adjustments to improve blocking on um, plays like inside zone split, RPO read wide receiver screen, play action jet sweep, and RPO peak. Improve left tackle blocking on pass plays in certain formations to address an issue where blocker would miss an edge pass rusher. Updated out routes in compression formats and the tight ends route in RPO wide peak so their releases are cleaner and the routes are more effective. Addressed issue with a halfback and tight end would sometimes run into each other on plays like zone split lead, alert X smoke, and RPO alert jailbreak screen. Alignment improvements, strong safety and cover three is in better position to play outside run versus wing formations. Adjusted wide receiver splits in spread formations to improve spacing and timing. Updated halfbacks run hole and 01 trap plays, which gives the halfback more space away from the defensive lineman who's being trapped. Which honestly, yeah, it's kind of OP, but that is true. It's nothing's worse than getting grabbed because that's just kind of how the play works. And because the way the game's coded, though, they would just grab you and ruin it. Now, I don't really run a lot of, uh, you know, trap, but I know a lot of people do. But guys, that is that, that is for the video. I know I went through that kind of fast, but this stuff is like, you know, basic. I just want to get through it. And guys, that's about it for the video. Hope you guys did enjoy. If you guys did, smash the like button, subscribe to the channel. Uh, if you guys want a chance for shout out on the Noti Gang or Poodle Gang, Poodle Squad, or you want to call it, like the video, comment down below Poodle Squad, and turn on the Noti Bell. Thank you guys so much for watching. Enjoy the rest of your day. I'm out. Peace.